Hi guys, today we're looking at the cell cycle and mitosis. So all organisms have cells that divide, unicellular and multicellular. And we have to look at why do cells divide? And there are four reasons. Cells will divide to repair or replace damaged cells. So if you get a cut and you need to heal that, or if cells age and die, they need to be replaced, those damaged cells need replaced. Cells also uh, divide for reproduction purposes. So asexual reproduction is when one cell divides into two and you have those identical clones. Um, and so uh, mitosis is used for asexual reproduction. Cells are also divide uh, because they need uh, organisms need growth and development, so uh, a cell will divide so that an organism can grow. Obviously, you started with what, just one cell, so we had to divide those cells to get you to have trillions of cells in your body. And as those cells divide, they will also become specialized so that they can perform different functions in your body. Lastly, a cell will divide to limit its size. Uh, cells need to be kept small so things can get in and out of it properly. If it gets too big, um, you can't get all the materials in or out and the cell will die. Uh, and you can kind of imagine like if a candle is in a small room, you can smell it really well, but if you put it in a really large room, you won't be able to smell it anymore. So the cell size needs to be limited and so it will divide to keep it small. So repair and replace, reproduce, to limit the size and for growth and development. And so the cell cycle is really important to cells. So the cell cycle itself, it's the life cycle of a cell and it has two main parts, interphase and what we call the M phase. Another name for the M phase is cell division because the cell will divide during that phase. So the cell cycle will start with one diploid cell. So this is gonna happen for body cells, uh, not for sex cells. And so it's gonna start diploid, meaning it has a set from mom and the set from dad. And it's gonna start with the first phase, which is called interphase. Interphase is the majority of the life cycle. It's the majority of the life where the cell does its normal cell things. And it is a period of growth and development. It's also the longest part of the cell cycle. It's gonna have three different parts, G1, S, and G2. So let's take a look at those three parts of interphase. G1 is cell growth. So the cell is going to grow and complete protein synthesis. Next will be the S phase. This is where DNA is gonna be replicated. And you'll notice that those single chromosomes will become Xs, those duplicated or replicated chromosomes. And that's important so that we can take those apart and each cell will have a complete set of DNA. And so each daughter cell has the right amount of DNA. And then lastly, we have G2. Uh, this is where we prepare for division. So we're going to create new organelles. We're also going to grow a little bit more so that the new cells aren't tiny when we split the one cell in half. All right, so we started with interphase, and we basically prepared to divide the cell, and we did normal cell things, so growth and development. Just a point right here, we need to understand why DNA replicates. So I wanted to show you this image. So if we start out with the two chromosomes, let's say our diploid number is 2N, just like a human cell would be 46, this is just two. Um, when we duplicate that DNA, we make them X's, we're then able to pull those X's apart so that you notice both of the daughter cells have the same number of uh, chromosomes as the parent does. So they have two complete chromosomes that they're supposed to have, just like the parent did. In between, we have those X's, that's too much DNA. And so we pull those X's apart and both daughter cell has the right amount. And so we duplicate the DNA so that each of the new cells has the right amount of DNA, a complete set. The last thing we'll mention about interphase is that some cells don't actually go through all of interphase. After G1, they enter into G0, which is just a place where cells stop and they don't divide. They just live their life. And there are a lot of cells that don't go through cell division. These are things like nerve and muscle cells. They're not replaceable once they're damaged. Um, and so G0 is just basically a period of no cell division. It's just cell life. 
you can take some time to answer some questions on the Edpuzzle. The next part of the cell cycle is the M phase, where the cell actually divides. And so the M phase is broken into two parts. You can, can see them right here. So this whole thing is the M phase. The first part is mitosis, and that's where we're going to divide the nucleus. The second part is cytokinesis, and we'll divide the rest of the cell, the cytoplasm. And so this is cell division. We're dividing the cell in two parts, the nucleus first, and then the rest of the cell. And then that is known as the M phase or cell division. So let's look at mitosis. That's the first thing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the nucleus and divide it into two nuclei. So those X's that we made in interphase, this is where we're going to pull them apart into those individual chromosomes. And so that extra DNA, that X's, those are pulled apart. So each of the new cells have a nucleus that has a full set of chromosomes. So we're going to create two nuclei, and each of those nuclei or each of those nucleuses will have a full set of chromosomes. And if you've learned this in the past, you probably have heard these four words. It happens in four steps, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. All right, once we've divided the nucleus, and we have two nuclei, so we have the control center of our cells already ready to go for the new daughter cells, now we can do what we call cytokinesis. We're going to divide the cell um, and the cytoplasm, the rest of the cell. And so cytokinesis in animal cells is this pinching in, basically pinches in the center until we separate the two cells. So they call that a cleavage furrow. I'll let you... Uh, uh, think about why they might call it a cleavage furrow, but to me it kind of looks like a butt when that's happening. So that's cytokinesis in animal cells. In plant cells, it's a little different uh, because they have a rigid cell wall. They have to have a cell plate that divides the two plant cells into two. And so that, that cell plate forms in between those two cells um, and then eventually will create the cell wall that will separate the two plant cells. At the end, plant cells kind of look like a Hershey bar to me. They have those sections, but they're kind of stuck together. Take some time to answer questions about the cell division or M phase. All right, the results of mitosis and the cell cycle. So the result of mitosis or the cell cycle is going to be two brand new cells that are body cells. They're somatic cells. And these cells have to be identical to the parent. So if your liver is making a new cell, two new cells, they better be identical to the original liver cells. You don't want some weirdo cells. Okay, so the daughter cells are identical. They are clones of the parent. There's only one time that we divide, so we divide the nucleus and the cytoplasm. We just divide that once. So we only divide the cell into two. And then remember the daughter cells have to have the same amount of DNA. So because it's a somatic cell, it's diploid. So it has that two N number. So for humans, that's 46. So we'll start with 46 chromosomes. We end with 46 chromosomes. Now, if I only had 10 chromosomes, I would start with 10 chromosomes and I would end with 10 chromosomes. But the number of chromosomes has to stay the same throughout the process. We stay diploid. And again, this is how we repair and replace. This is how single cell organisms will divide so that they can have two organisms and they can reproduce. So they make the same identical cells, but they're two. They're just a little bit smaller because we split one in half. So here we go. We start with 46 chromosomes. We replicate those chromosomes and then we split them back. So we end up with 46 chromosomes in the end. Take a minute to answer this question uh, in the Ed Puzzle. All right, lastly, we need to talk about things that control the cell cycle. There are different factors that control the cell cycle and tell the cell when to go through cell division. The first is called anchorage dependence. So cells are only gonna divide if they're on a solid surface. So they're not gonna divide while they're floating. The second is something called density dependent, meaning that they have to have room to grow. If they get too crowded, the cells just stop dividing. Then we have growth factors. Growth factors basically tell the cell that it needs to divide. And so there are different types of cell uh, growth factors for different types of cells, but basically they turn on cell division and tell the cell, yep, you can go and divide. I will just point out 
that along the cell cycle, there are checkpoints, but that allow the cell to continue through the process. But there are certain types of cells that do not go through um, the cell cycle. Oops, I don't know how to go back here. <laughs> and those are cancer cells. So cancer cells don't listen to those rules and they keep dividing. And that's what causes the problem in terms of cancer forming tumors. So that was the cell cycle and mitosis. Next week, we'll learn about meiosis, which is going to make not body cells, but those sex cells, the sperm and eggs. So come back next week to learn about meiosis.